Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's Countdown to CyberSec Global 2020. My name is Magdalena Petroniak. I'm the Communication Advisor to Kościuszko Institute, the organizer of the CyberSec Forum. And I have a real pleasure of introducing our speakers and the CyberSec agenda in this short series of fireside chats. Today with me, uh, there is Magda Celi, who is based in Singapore. Magda, welcome. Thank you very much, Magda, as well. I'm really glad to be here today. Yeah, it's a pleasure. So for everyone who's watching us, Magda Celi is one of our speakers, and he's also, she is the head of cyber risk consulting, Marsh Asia. She is the founder and, and the big ambassador of women in cybersecurity. So she is the founder of WUSEC, um, Singapore chapter and the brand ambassador of CyberSec Forum uh, Asia Pacific um, Japan. Is that correct, Magda? Did I mention all your titles correctly? Yeah, that's correct, Magda. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you for being today with us. Magda, we are less than three weeks um, to the CyberSec global 2020 forum this year this is an exceptional edition which will take online will be virtually uh, will take place on 28th 30th september and i would like to discuss with you a few topics related to to this edition of cybersec so the first let's get right into it the first question i have the digital world has really demonstrated how technology tools can serve the prosperity and well-being of societies and economies. At the same time, what we observe, the digital acceleration has kind of engendered cyber threats. According to you, what are the major challenges to cybersecurity today? How, and how can we overcome these challenges? I think it's a very valid question, Magda, especially during those times. But I will start by the point that we have the previously or the traditional strategy around cybersecurity that have been adopted by businesses pre-COVID-19. We're focused on a perimeter approach. The employees were working from the office and the company was able to clearly define the do's and the don'ts. The two technologies used to protect the organizations from cyber attacks weren't actually designed for today's challenging business environment and actually do not and have never been the magic tools to address emerging cyber risk. So with the COVID-19, what happens is that the risk profiles of companies have shifted. Firewalls, intrusion detection systems, malware protection or other tools actually worked relatively well before but now when organizations are not anymore you know dependent on just one location and are fully dependent on technology on employees working from any anywhere this is actually not any more efficient and especially not actually bringing the right results the business risk is actually should include as well the cyber risk and a good cyber i would say security approach should focus on people process and technology and until today i see in various markets uh, the cyber risk as an it problem given all that adapting to a world where there are no perimeters is really critical an old-fashioned traditional cyber security approach is no more sufficient again i'm actually just making sure that everyone realize and understand the message but an approach on data and people should be really the priority the actually that would defy the cyber security perimeter and give a completely different perspective so companies should shift their cyber security focus to data and that actually makes sense because that's what you need to protect the data has the value and this translates of course into a need for a stronger data governance, tools to tackle data discovery and classification, and an appropriate method to store and protect data. Now, the other point that is as well, I think very relevant in this shift of risk profile is actually 
transitioning into a zero trust approach or perspective. So what do I mean by that? Traditionally, companies trusted internal networks and mistrusted external networks. Now, in the current world, all networks represent a risk. Thus, it's really actually critical to have a zero perimeter world where actually every kind of perspective or every security control should actually be integrated by design and by default within the design phase of the systems. On the other side, we still actually have and see are seeing the traditional authentication method, which I'm sure this has been addressed very, very often. And companies do forget that the humans remain the weakest link. And they feel when they're working remotely, and logging in, especially using cloud technologies to their platforms, using only passwords, they are actually exposing the company's systems and data to very easy exploitation as passwords can be cracked. For example, with an alpha, with a numeric eight character password in less than two seconds. So those are actually some of the main challenges that I perceive, but also some good recommendation for companies to take on board post COVID-19 because there will be no much of a change, I believe, after this new norm is actually enforced. Thank you. Thank you for mentioning all that. We will actually cover a lot of topics that you mentioned during our business stream at the CyberSec, which will take place on day two of CyberSec, 29th of September. We'll be talking about, about big data and big challenges also, how we counter adversity in, in data-driven adversity uh, economy. We'll be talking about decoupling so how these processes uh, are going, decoupling in the digital supply chains. We'll be talking about practices uh, from digital leaders in, in the times of COVID. And last but not least, uh, we will be talking a lot about uh, the enhancement of 5G technology and also how the COVID-19 um, redefined the critical sector of economies. So the, we will tackle a lot of um, new topics and new challenges, not just for businesses, but also for society. So there comes then another question because, you know, the main mission of CyberSec is to bring together actors from different fields, from different worlds. We, we, uh, this is the, the public uh, policy conference. So we invite governments, we invite uh, public, um, public institutions, businesses, academia, uh, to come together and work together against adversarial internet. And this is actually the light motive of uh, this year's edition. So from your perspective, in what ways can public and private actors, independent experts, and academia uh, work together to ensure cyber safety? I think, Magdalena, this topic is very important and requires different perspectives to optimize their approach. So cybersecurity is at the same time an imperative and an opportunity for both public and private sectors. So when we have advanced capabilities, highly skilled IT for workforce, a country would be well positioned to actually build a lively cybersecurity ecosystem, not only to protect their own system, but as well to drive an ecosystem with a variety, diversity from various perspectives. Now on a high level, I think we should look at networks, know-how, human capital, financials, operations, and regulatory requirements. What do I mean? Perhaps a little bit more on a granular level, basically the key areas of partnership between private and public sectors would focus on workforce development, education, R&D, startup ecosystem, private sector investment as well in cybersecurity in alignment with a mature or maturing regulatory landscape a top-down and a down-top approach sim simultaneously. This is what I believe can be really at least bringing the right fruits. Now, 
Singapore has been a very good role model for those kind of initiatives. And I would like to actually give some examples. For example, the public sector has collaborated with industry partners and institutes of higher learning to grow the cybersecurity workforce, including encouraging existing cybersecurity professionals to deepen their skills through career change programs. The Cybersecurity Agency of Singapore has launched the SG Woman in Cyber Initiative in September 2020, where the agency collaborates with various industry associations, like, for example, Women of Security Singapore for its event, and including, or as another example, is actually our Catch the Flag event on 12th of September, a 24 hours online hacking competition for girls. Now, other interesting public private collaborations would be encouraging the startup ecosystem. And I do think that that one is very, very interesting for countries. Building accelerators, scale up programs supported by government agency, not only bring that diversity in the economy, but as well encourage innovation. In Singapore, we have I-71, which is actually what I have been part of. And it's, again, a program that creates and encourages the diversity in a space that really requires as well, you know, um, not only interest from individuals, but helps locally develop products in cybersecurity. So now as a, another point that I need to think about uh, when, when you ask me this question, or I need to mention is the R&D. And of course, that comes down to the collaboration with academia, basically harnessing cybersecurity in a more targeted manner to deliver that uh, innovation part, again, from a research perspective building the right programs for the future. So there are several areas, but I think the other point that is really interesting as well is the regulatory focus. Again, in Singapore, there is a strong collaboration between the Monetary Authority of Singapore that has regular public consultation with the private sector, and therefore the private sector is able to bring feedback and give opinion. So those are some of the initiatives. Now, industry-specific public-private partnership can also encourage sharing of information, especially in cybersecurity, and disclosure to better build the capabilities around cyber resilience. So now I think just to conclude on your questions, I hope that those few points gave some ideas. But I do think if you know anyone would like to read a little bit more of those kind of collaborations, Singapore represents a great role model at the, at the global forefront of cybersecurity innovation and economic opportunities. So just read about it more. It's really fascinating. You're, you're an amazing ambassador of Singapore. Thank you for mentioning all that experiences and examples. Um, uh, you related to regulatory uh, part of uh, the, what's going on, and we'll tackle that issue in a side session that uh, you are a speaker that will take place on the 30th of September, and we'll be talking about the revision of NHS uh, uh, directive. So everyone um, uh, hopefully follow up on this uh, as well. Um, Magda. Uh, you mentioned a lot of uh, public organizations based in out of Singapore, but you know, uh, this year's edition we invite um, organizations from all around uh, APJ to join, and uh, we are very happy to have um, a lot of um, sector, industry, and think tanks to join the CyberSec. Um, how will you encourage? cybersecurity enthusiasts and experts to join the CyberSec. What do you think it can be the big benefit of being part of that experience? Well, Magdalena, I think it's all about different perspectives. And in the cybersecurity field, we have, unfortunately, sometimes a kind of narrow perspective or views of certain domains. And I think CyberSec is a perfect opportunity to give yourself a different perspective and listen to other opinions and initiatives, especially the combination between public and private sector brings a lot of 
value to the audience. So uh, in, from my view, it's not only about the topics, it goes beyond. It's about really sharing experiences and perspective around, you know, views on, again, public and private collaborations, uh, the different, different initiatives that actually have different weights depending on which country are actually discussing those. So in my view, it's all about going out of your comfort zone and go listen to diff a different word and a different way of doing things that might be even more interesting than yours because you always learn and learning is what keeps us going. Wonderful. So everyone, uh, please join CyberSec. Registration is on. You can book your front seat uh, uh, at uh, our website. You will have, you probably see more information below. So welcome to um, register your, your seat at CyberSec. Magda, last but not least, uh, you know, our light motive. This is very important because it brings the mission. So can we just, you know, invite everyone to the CyberSec 2020 with the light motive that I would like to invite you to present? Absolutely. So together against adversarial internet. Yes. Let's come together and meet together at CyberSec 2020. Magda, thank you very much for this lovely talk. And I'm very pleased to see you at uh, the CyberSec 2020 very soon. Thank you very much. Same here. I'm looking forward to it.